welcome to a new episode of The Brand Called You. Today, I have a very good friend, a fellow member of the YPO, and a well-known industrialist. Anil Khaitan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ishwar. Anil is a BCom. He's an MBA from IMD Geneva. He joined the family business, which is the Shalimar Group in 1976. His business interests range from jute and tobacco, Shalimar wires, gelatin capsules, digital marketing, and interestingly, he has a company called Doorcraft Products in USA, and we'll talk about it. Anil is also very, very active in all the industry bodies. Uh, he's with Asocham, he's with CII, he was the, the immediate past chair of PhD CCI. Anil, what an honor to have you on our show. Thank you, Ashutosh. It's also my pleasure to be with you. Thank you. You know, you are such a successful industrialist from jute to digital marketing. Talk to us about your early career, your learnings and your challenges. Well, my early career, Ashutosh, was uh, quite challenging. Because my father is the entrepreneur. Uh, we five brothers are the inheritors. So I being the eldest, my father put me through the grind. Mm. And our first company which he put up, Shalimar Industries in Calcutta, which is next to the B College Sivpur. Uh, first of all, the first thing he did was he didn't give me a car. Okay. I had to walk to the bus stand, go to the factory in bus, come back in bus. So that was a very good learning of how people behave in the bus, how people talk in the bus. Mm -hmm. And you get ground root Correct. or ground level feedback. Correct. Uh, secondly, of course, as I think most of the people have come up, you work on the shop floor and then you work in various departments, so on and so forth. So the training period was for about three years mm -hmm. uh, before my father gave me to look after Shalimar Industries. And Shalimar Industries was quite a difficult industry. It was like uh, nine or ten small scale industry in one big factory. And this was in jute? Catering to the jute okay. mills. Okay. And uh, the jute industry in India or in Calcutta and West Bengal, unfortunately, they believe in running their companies on the money of Sunday creditors. Okay. So cash flow used to be a huge problem. Our outstandings were average uh, 200 days. Wow. And it's very difficult if your cash doesn't even roll twice a year. Mm. So from Shalima Industries, then I went to Geneva mm -hmm. because I was determined to do my master's in business. Mm -hmm. This was a one year course which is very famously known that you need six, seven years of work experience. Absolutely. So you get a full-fledged MBA degree. And it was at that time known as, as CEI. Mm -hmm. Then the name got changed to IMI. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it got merged with another management institute, which is which was in Lausanne mm -hmm. by the name of IMIDE. Mm -hmm. Now it's known as IMD Lausanne. Okay. So I did my MBA from there. And from there I came back. And then... I was looking after Shalima Wires, mm -hmm. which was catering to the paper mills. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and so from Shalima Wires, then we went to Anil Steel, we went to Sunil Healthcare mm -hmm. and to other of our, uh, you know, businesses. Mm -hmm. And then slowly by 85 or 86, my father made me the vice chairman okay. of the whole group. Wonderful. So, before I get into discussions on some of your businesses, you know, how do you manage such a diverse range of businesses? How much time do you spend on each business? Well, at the moment, uh, initially, as I said, we are five brothers. So, the businesses have been now neatly divided okay. amongst the five brothers. So, we manage our own businesses, but then we have a system. And fortunately, we've adopted the YPO forum system mm -hmm. that we meet once after the quarter is finished mm -hmm. so we can then review the performances of the quarter mm -hmm. see the next quarter discuss strategies try to help each other so on and so forth so we are basically separate looking after each business yet united mm -hmm. so the love is maintained because my father was a great visionary he always said to me no two sons of mine will stay in the same city and no two sons will be in the same business 
that is why he single handedly put up seven uh, seven factories all over india i put up the eighth one which was in gujarat in baruj district that was a copper smelter cum refinery like you have the sterlite mm. and birla copper which is now in indalco right. so that was the eighth factory which we basically put up okay. under my supervision in the year 98 okay and are you still involved in jute my younger brother is mm. at the moment i have sort of taken a back seat and the pharmaceutical part of the business is what you are looking at. is um is what i'm looking after and my two sons are basically in it and i concentrate more on talking to my brothers and basically general strategy keeping the whole group together and doing my networking because ashutosh i always feel that both you and i have come to a stage where relationships or relation building is far more important mm-hmm. which automatically builds your business correct so then let me ask you a related question you know you spoke about networking how important is networking uh, in the life of a young individual who is starting off his or her career well i think networking is very important because i always feel that when you start your career mm-hmm. you need the skill mm-hmm. you need the will initially you need the skill mm-hmm. because that's what's going to get you up correct but as you've grown up in the organization then you need the will to convert all what you've learned mm-hmm. into relationships okay because if you see today 99% of people are hired or fired because of behavior okay so behavioral skills are extremely important mm-hmm. and networking the best and the biggest advantage is that to open a door of a customer which might take you one year mm-hmm. and if you're networked and you get into either referral marketing mm-hmm. or through a networking you happen to know somebody in the company then that same door which takes you one year it opens in one week means that's true that is true because you are known mm-hmm. to each other correct correct and that really facilitates you in your business mm-hmm. secondly the biggest advantage in networking is that you learn mm-hmm. you learn from other persons mm-hmm. rather than only talking about what you know mm-hmm. is best to absorb that's why i always say that in two words listen and silent mm-hmm. letters are the same the same correct and we indians by nature we are very poor listeners correct and i have found through my experience that if i listen there'll be so much of gem coming into my ears mm-hmm. which will help me to change a decision true or change my mind which i was not going to had i spoken very well said i would not have uh listen to the creativity or a new idea trying to you know come to me from the concerned person very interesting so anil let's talk a little bit about the business you and your sons currently handle which is sunil healthcare you entered the healthcare space through capsules that's right, right? um how big is this demand that's well, the first question to you yes uh now a pharmaceutical industry it has various dosage forms tablets capsules ointments syrup vaccines okay. injectables okay. so capsule is a part of the pharma industry it's not a very huge industry if you see the size of the market worldwide is only 5 billion dollars but the biggest advantage in this business is the contribution after you minus a variable mm-hmm. cost like raw material power and packing contribution towards fixed cost mm-hmm. is almost 60 to 65% mm-hmm. so the margins are high are quite high okay and profit before tax is approximately 20 to 22% wonderful wonderful on your turnover okay 
And, uh, you know, there's a lot of debate I keep reading about. And even when I showed on Guardian, we used to have a lot of private labels uh, for capsules. The concept of vegetarian capsules started to evolve. And for the thousands of people who listen to our podcast and view uh, us, why do capsules have to be called vegetarian? Aren't all capsules vegetarian? No. Capsules were developed 150 years ago okay. by a company known as uh, Ella Lilly. Mm -hmm. And it was made from gelatin. And gelatin is extracted from the bones of the cattle. Mm -hmm. So now people have become very aware. Mm -hmm. And I've heard my own doctors saying that when patients come, mm -hmm. they ask, Doctor, don't give us gelatin, give us vegetarian capsules. Okay. Now, vegetarian capsules are basically made from a chemical known as HPMC, mm -hmm. which is made by three companies in the world. One is Dow Chemicals, one is Samsung Chemicals in South Korea, and in Japan, it is Jinetsu Chemicals. Mm -hmm. Now, what they do is, you have these pine trees, which are growing at minus 40 degrees, minus 60 degrees Celsius in Scandinavia, in Canada, so on and so forth. So, first, those softwood pine trees are used to make the pulp mm -hmm. for the paper industry now whatever is the residue are taken by these companies and these companies through a technology which is not known to me mm -hmm. they extract hpmc okay. and that works as a raw material wow. so that is a vegetarian capsules now vegetarian capsules are on the price side if gelatin capsules are two dollars per thousand capsules mm -hmm. Vegetarian capsules would be $6 okay. per thousand capsules. And now vegetarian capsules are used a lot in the nutraceutical space. Okay. Pharmaceutical space is still, they are demanding okay. gelatin mm -hmm. because gelatin capsules, they disintegrate faster mm -hmm. into your stomach. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. seven to eight minutes. Mm -hmm. Vegetarian capsules take longer. Okay. Okay. So moving to your second business and a little bit about your second business on wood and then we'll come to your association with so many bodies. Um, your company Doorcraft Products is in the US. First question, how did you find a, product, a company so far away and why doors? Well, uh, that's interesting. In fact, my youngest brother lives in the US. Okay. He migrated in 2003. Mm -hmm. So he was dibbling dabbling uh, into furniture mm. and kitchen cabinets yeah. and so on and so forth. Mm. He had his vendors lined up in China and Vietnam, but somehow that didn't work out. So then he got a good opportunity in a facility which was 40 miles away from Atlanta. So he got a plot of about 35 acres. So he took over that plot and through a diligent funding process, he got his fund in place mm -hmm. and he started the factory uh, three years ago. Okay. So in that factory now, we are making customized kitchen cabinets and customized doors mm -hmm. for the various apartment buildings and whatever. And this is only the for the US or you're exporting to India? It's only to the US. Okay. Only for the US market. And that is why my brother is now, uh, you can say, laughing to the bank in view of the US boom and China trade war. Ah. Because on his product itself, the you know duty which was zero has gone up to 25%. Okay. Well, so his point. product now becomes much more viable to an American customer vis-a-vis mm. -vis importing from China. Mm. Wonderful. So Anil, you know, you've spent a lot of time with different industry associations. I recently saw you sitting next to the defense minister in one of the bodies. Uh, you have been uh, in the past chair of PhD CCI. Uh, you chair Asocham Startup Group and you've been involved a lot. My first question to you is, what role do these industry associations play? Well, nowadays industry associations have become far more effective mm -hmm. than what they were, let's say, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Because the government has realized that unless we take reality feedback mm -hmm. from industry associations, again, we'll be making very silly mm -hmm. and non-implementable policies. Okay. So industry associations contribute a great deal in helping the government to come to a rational 
policy decision. Mm -hmm. So that's point number one. And the point number two is industry associations now have tied up with a lot of international industry associations. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, give and take mm -hmm. of knowledge, okay. or which comes across because now in India, there's a common sentence which I found in the bureaucracy or in the present government ministers that when we go with certain issues and when we find they are not able to answer specifically, immediate the sentence will come, what is the best international practice? Okay. So nowadays, we industry associations, we go ready, say on income tax. Mm -hmm. I had met then finance minister, Mr. Arun Jetli. Mm -hmm. I told him, sir, a lot of times in India, we talk of best international practice. Mm -hmm. Now in the United States, taxes come down from 35 to 21% straight. Mm -hmm. Now that's a good international yeah. practice. Yeah. So why can't we do it in India? Mm -hmm. Because the tax base will increase. Mm -hmm. So I said, in, I still feel, my hunch feeling says your absolute tax collection in terms of value will be more mm -hmm. than taxing at 35%. Mm -hmm. Of course, he didn't agree to it that time. But then, as we have they seen lately, now, finally, they have come. And I think it's a great decision which the present finance minister has taken of this 15% tax mm -hmm. on new investments to be commissioned before 31st March 2023. Mm -hmm. I think that will bring in foreign investments mm -hmm. because foreign investments are essential for India, Ashutosh. The reason being why, if you see the size of our budget, mm -hmm. it's only 24 lakh crores. Mm -hmm. And every year you see the fiscal deficit is mm -hmm. seven, seven and a half lakh crores. Yeah. And if you see the interest, it is almost the same amount. Correct. So the fiscal deficit is to the equivalent to our interest amount. Mm -hmm. And if you cast our Indian budget mm. into a profit loss, we are EBITDA minus. Okay. Okay. So we are borrowing money to pay interest. Okay. So the government has no money because out of 24 crores, approximately 16 to 17 lakh crores is already fixed expenditure. Okay. Seven, seven and a half lakh crores you pay on interest. Three, three and a half lakh goes towards, you know, defense. Another three, three and a half lakh goes towards the establishment expenses of the government. Mm -hmm. Then about 2.8 lakh crores goes towards subsidy. So these are fixed expenses which we call in our corporate parlance. Understand. So unless the size of the budget goes to 40, Correct. 45 lakh crores, okay. I mean, I don't see India spending on, you know, healthcare, on education, which are dire which necessity of the country. Which I agree with you. So moving on, you know, um, let's talk about the startup ecosystem. I mean, you know, You've got eight businesses in your family or eight factories in your family. You're starting off new businesses all the time. You're currently chairing um, Asuchan's startup uh, group. Um, what are some of the mistakes that a lot of startup entrepreneurs make? The biggest mistake they make is on marketing, on finance and on HR. Like I had two or three startups coming to me, asking me, Anil sir, what are the type of questions mm -hmm. we should ask the candidate in an interview? Mm -hmm. A lot of startups don't even know the meaning of working capital. Okay. A lot of startups have to be coached that don't divert short term funds for long term and long term funds for short term because that is a cancer and you are bound to shut down. Correct. They are very gung ho about their product they've made. There I have no doubts about it. But still, there is a tremendous scope in getting technology further for them to absorb and adopt the technology. There I'm reasonably confident mm -hmm. because the youngsters have a very creative mind. See, I'll give you a small example. We had a startup pitch on the 18th of October in Chandigarh. And there were two startups which came from Ara and from Balia of Bihar. Wow. <coughs> so the startup uh, concept has really pervaded the youth of India. Mm -hmm. It has made the youth think. And plus, the biggest advantage is, which a lot of industries don't realize, is for we the industry. Mm -hmm. 
who in India are very well known of not doing R&D, correct? Not doing disruptive innovations. Mm. That is where now we are starting to use the startups Excellent. because I constantly tell the startups, please do B2B mm. also mm. apart from B2C. Mm. And we are trying to get them industry connect because if they have an industry connect, at least they have a market. Mm. Say, for instance, I gave an example of, you know, color matching. Mm. I said the paint industry, the printing packaging, and there are so many mm. industries. Mm. Say you have that blue color mm. in front of you. Mm. Now, if another stool is to be made exactly same color, so there should be some kind of a technology okay. which tells the manufacturer that you put less of this ingredient and that more of this, and this is what you should actually do mm. to get to that color. Mm. I'm just giving an example. Now, that is a need mm. of we, the industry. The moment we know a startup is there catering to that need, mm. we ourselves would go and support it. And take interest and support it Correct. and finance it like LNT is already doing. Mm. Tata's are already doing. Very good. From yeah. that point of view. Very good. <laughs> so, you know, coming again to uh, staying with startups, we know that nine out of 10 startups don't make it. And um, I've often asked this question from my guests that, you know, Indians are always taught to win. No matter what happens, you've got to come first. And it shows itself in our traffic and our queues everywhere else. Somehow or the other, I've got to get in front. But when a startup fails, then we don't give the poor entrepreneur or the startup entrepreneur too much of a chance when the same individual becomes a hero in Silicon Valley. How important is it for us to start explaining that failure is not bad in India? It's absolutely the most important point to explain to the startup that unless you fail, you will not be able to succeed. Mm. And that is one major issue you have pointed out, Ashutosh, mm. that we in India, we are too impatient, we are too narrow-minded, and we feel that invest now and reap harvest in one year or one and a half years. That's right. not how things work. Mm. That is not in the West. Mm. They are much more patient. And they handhold the startups yeah. at every step. Correct. So I think the success rate, although I am not studied, I'm just making off the cuff mm. statement, mm. but mm. I have a hunch feeling the success rate of startups, say in the United States mm. or in China, would be more hmm. than it is in India. Okay, That's a, a topic worth discussing at some later stage with more data. Absolutely. But oh, with more data, it's a great topic to discuss. Because, you know, we have startups, startup entrepreneurs who end up, and in one recent case, a very high profile individual took the extreme step. And I often wonder how, what must have driven an individual to that other than saying that I have failed, what will everyone think about me? And ended up taking his life. So, you know, it's, it's a very major challenge that we are facing. That's another, you know, cultural issue of ours. That's a social cultural issue that if we fail, what will people say? Correct. And that is what I tell people. In fact, I still remember, Ashutosh, when I gave my farewell talk as PhD president, mm. I told the entire managing committee, mm. I said, when I took over as presidency, mm. the Hindi song of the film Amar Prem, mm. I adopted Kuch to log kahenge, logon ka kaam hai kehna. Well said. Yeah. So I worked because I always feel that in every human being, a moment a thought comes, immediately with that thought comes a red light or a green light. Mm. Red light means no, this thought is not correct. That is your inner voice speaking. Mm. Similarly, the inner voice says this thought is correct. The green light comes. 99% mm. of the people will always follow the red light. Correct. And they mess up their life. Mm. It is people who can dictate their mind rather than getting dictated by their mind, say the likes of our own prime minister, mm. who can control their mind, they always yeah. succeed. Yeah. So Anil, you know, when I was reading about you, your favorite quote is, and I quote, the only thing perfect in the world is nature. Unquote. Tell me about this quote and your philosophy. See, nature today, take the case of sun. The sun will rise 
as per the season of India. Mm. I monitor the sunrise every morning. Mm. In summer, mm. the sunrise is at 5.13 a.m. Mm. on 22nd of June. Mm. In the winters, on 22nd of December, mm. you can check your iPhone yeah. and you will see the sunrise is at 7.10 or 7.12. Sure. So almost by two hours, mm. it shifts. Mm. And this happens every, every year. year. That is perfection. Mm. Two, three minutes here and there always happens. That is called imperfection in nature, but still nature is perfect. Okay. And law of gravity. Mm. That's also nature. True. Vegetation, mountains. Today, why I say nature? Because human beings have not created anything. Correct. So my follow-up question, what is the learning that we can draw from this? The biggest learning is that we must understand that nature gives us each and every raw material. Including the high-tech stuff today. All the sound waves and all. These are all nature. Mm. You take textiles. It's, it's from the cotton mm. grown. You take automobiles, mm. steel, mm. iron ore. Mm. You take aluminum, mm. bauxite. Mm. Anything you anything you can conceive of. Mm. This wooden table, mm. trees. Mm. So everything is taken from nature. Correct. Human beings have Correct. developed technology mm. to use that product of nature mm. and through technology make it so comfortable for human use. Okay. Very good. So in short, I say that is why nature is perfect because nature never makes mistakes. Okay, wonderful. And we've been fooling around with nature too long. Absolutely. And that fooling around is going to show maybe not you and me, but definitely our grandchildren or our great grandchildren. Absolutely. So Anil, a few more questions on sure, of you course. personally. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your learnings from your biggest failure. My learning from my biggest failure is only concentrate on one thing at one time. Mm. I had this habit of concentrating on five, six things and I used to make a mess of it. Mm. So now I've learned that to control your mind, just if you are doing one thing, just focus on that with your blinkers on, forget everything else. Mm. So that is the biggest learning I have learned from my failure. The other learning which I have coined myself mm is you know p to the power cube and that stands for perseverance patience and passion okay unless i in me don't have these three i was feeling orphaned but as i slowly started thinking as the famous english saying says as you think you shall become mm -hmm. that has helped me a lot that learning okay. of developing the patience, mm -hmm. having passion to what I work because then work doesn't seem like work mm -hmm. and perseverance okay. because perseverance you have to do then only patience comes Correct. into play. Correct. So I my last question to you, you know, back to startups with all your experience and the many, many people you must have mentored. Our show is watched by 15, 20,000 people every day. What would your advice be to a young individual wanting to start his or her startup journey? My one piece of advice would be keep your focus. Okay. And as I said, what I have coined along with the focus, have these three P's ingrained, in, ingrained into your DNA because you would need patience. You would need passion, you would need perseverance to make your startup successful. Okay. So don't lose heart as long as your focus is there. That's why I often quote in my various talks from that great story of Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. When Arjun was asked and he says, I only see the eye of the bird. Mm -hmm. So I always say in Hindi that in today's age, Arjun ka focus, bagi sab bogus. Okay. So that is the only advice I would like to give to the startup people. Mm -hmm. Keep your focus and keep these three as your ammunitions, perseverance, patience and passion. Wonderful. So Anil, uh, on that 
fantastic note of perseverance, patience, and passion. Your perseverance, passion, and passion is clear from your incredible journey over the last four, four decades. Thank you very much for being on our show. Thank you, Ashutosh, for having me on your show. Thank you for listening to the Brand Called You podcast. Be sure to visit tbcy.in to join the conversation, access show notes, and discover fantastic bonus content. You can follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Simply search for The Brand Called You. Thank you and see you next week.